Can I, I'll just walk over there in a minute. Can I, I just want to talk to this guy. Can I ask you a quick fast. question? Yeah. This is Pastor Steven Anderson, standing in the parking lot of the Make America Straight Again conference held in the Orlando area on the anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting, an attack on a gay nightclub that killed 49 people. What's the goal, what's the main purpose that you're trying to accomplish with this conference? Of the conference? Yes. Well, it's just to basically be a voice giving the other side. LGBT, they're sodomites, they're dogs. Yeah. That's what the Bible calls them, dogs. Yeah. Dogs! On TV, Hollywood, the media, school, they're only getting a pro-homo agenda, so I'm trying to give people the other side. Yeah, the media advocates that gay people should be able to live normal lives and love who they please as long as there's informed consent. What's Anderson's alternative? Do you advocate for the genocide? I, I, I wish that every homo would die. Including yourself. Okay. Jesus! And this isn't the first time that Anderson has said something like this. I hate all homos and I wish they would all die. God told Moses, kill homosexuals, kill them all. That's what God said. If I had a button right here on the pulpit, I could just push this button and every would fall over dead. I'll push it until it breaks. I will push it until I break my finger. In the US, while free speech is protected by the First Amendment, inciting others to commit a crime is not. How does Anderson not get arrested for inciting people to violence? Well, for Pastor Anderson's statement to be illegal, he must technically be advocating for imminent lawless action, a standard laid out in the court case Brandenburg versus Ohio. Anderson gets around this by saying, Do you okay. advocate that anyone here take no, violence into their hands? No, absolutely I'm, I'm totally nonviolent. It's a spiritual battle. That's right. Okay, it's words that I'm speaking. But clearly it's not just a spiritual battle. I don't give a rip whether they get married or not. Stone them with stones. And you know what? If we had a righteous government, homosexuality would be illegal like it was only a few decades ago. That right there is his out. Stephen Anderson wants a theocratic state, a Christian version of ISIS. He doesn't advocate for vigilantism, just for state-sponsored genocide based on an almost Sharia-like Levitical law. If we had a righteous government, homosexuality would be illegal like it was only a few decades Ago. That'd be like saying, I'm totally non-violent. I don't advocate that individuals in Rwanda slaughter the Tutsi people. But if we had a righteous Hutu government, they would just do the ethnic cleansing for us. Or, I don't advocate that anyone here kill Jews. But if we had a righteous government like the Germans did just 75 years ago, being a Jew would be illegal. I wish every single one of them would die. I hate them. They're filthy. They're disgusting. They're pedophiles. It's disgusting and filthy. And we're the ones who have the guts to say it. Now, a lot of churches take a love the sinner, hate the sin approach. And I was curious what Steven thought about this. If someone is gay, but they don't engage in gay actions, I, you, why I, do you I, care I, about I that? These stupid distinctions, Boys. LGBT, it's all one category, sodomites. Holy hell, is he saying that he not only wants to execute gay people for the harmless consensual acts that they do, but it sounds like Pastor Anderson just went full thought crime. Fundamentalists like this are a perfect showcase for the danger of taking your holy books literally. Now, before he left, I asked Stephen why other churches weren't trumpeting his message. I see a lot of churches that don't endorse homosexuality, uh, but they're not getting protested. Why do you think that your churches- Because they're a bunch of cowards. They, they, they'll say it behind closed doors, but they won't say it to the camera because they don't have the guts. Many churches actually don't support Anderson's views, and we even had a pastor drive up during our peaceful protest to the conference to tell us that he condemned their message of hate. But I honestly think that Pastor Anderson is right here. There are a lot of churches who hold this hateful belief about gay people behind closed doors, and it's horrible. And this, this right here, is the problem with religious moral frameworks. They're dogmatic and set in stone. While societies learn and grow and develop new and improved moral systems that maximize well-being and cause less pain and suffering, religions claim to be the unalterable final revelation of divine origins, and societies that stick with those theories legal systems remain in horrific barbary, trapped in an unending dark ages. Finally, Pastor Anderson peaced out with class. Sorry, sorry freaks, I gotta go. Get AIDS and die. This is actually an extremely common trope of the NIFB, that AIDS is God's punishment for gay people, because heterosexual couples never get AIDS. Guess what, Pastor? You know who has the lowest rate of AIDS? Lesbian women. Also, did you know that in the 1970s and early 80s, thousands of hemophiliacs, which are people with an inherited genetic condition, who bleed excessively because their blood won't clot properly, they received blood transfusions infected with hepatitis C or HIV and became infected. If HIV is God
God's punishment for gay people, then his incompetence and lack of foresight had significant collateral damage. So much for omniscience. And on the STD note in general, you know that we have vaccines, cures, or treatments for almost every major STD now, and that the widespread use of antiretroviral drugs, condoms, and pre and post exposure prophylaxis are decreasing the spread of HIV infections and helping infected people combat the virus and live normal lives. At the current rate of advancement in research within the next two decades, AIDS will most likely be a thing of the past. Where's your God now? Steven Anderson's position isn't based in science. He repeatedly uses scare tactics and misinformation to stir up hatred against the LGBT plus community to try to justify the hatred and bigotry in his precious Bible. Fortunately, we don't have to oblige this exasperated wiener. His thought crime fantasy is not reality. Think for yourself, dare to be curious, but don't drink the Kool-Aid. On a side note, I think I know why Pastor Anderson is so grouchy. If you had a flute rape your ears like this every single Sunday, you'd probably be grumpy too. before you go, this video that I made was actually flagged as hate speech by YouTube's algorithms because I used a few clips of Pastor Anderson's sermons that had been previously flagged on other channels. This happened over a week ago and my video wasn't even public. It was unlisted and it got instantly brought down. I appealed it, but YouTube staff still hasn't reviewed it. So I made a few changes and am re-uploading this, hoping that I don't get a strike from this one. But I feel like videos like this are extremely important. So I'm willing to risk it. That said, Every video that I've put out in the last two months has been demonetized, meaning YouTube will run limited or no ads on it, which affects my financial ability to do this full time. Because apparently advocating for the rights of the LGBT plus community or talking about the science of abortion is too controversial. I don't do this for the money. I never have. But I have to pay bills. And basically what allows me to afford to have my videos demonetized and still talk about important issues like this is Patreon. On Patreon, you pledge a small dollar amount per video that I release, and you can cap it to limit the number of videos that you'll pay that much for each month. It's pretty much like a tip jar if you appreciate the work that I'm doing and want to support more of my videos. You can support my work at patreon.com slash holy kool-aid or make a one-time donation on PayPal. The links are in the description below. There's also different perks depending on what tier you pledge at. And to all my current supporters and patrons, thank you. Y'all freaking rock. And as always, dare to be curious, but don't drink the kool-aid.